Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, just after sort of Monday lunchtime here in Australia, so again, still sort of Sunday evening stateside, but we can see that the market is slowly starting to make its way back up. We're getting back to that sort of $1.5 trillion mark thereabouts, but we're not out of the woods just yet, but it is looking slightly promising. And when we get to the Bitcoin charts, I'll show you what I mean. But overall, again, up 3.6%, and you know, any gain's a good gain, we'll take it over a loss. Bitcoin dominance, 45.7%, so nearly getting to 46%. Uh, ETH dominance, 16.2%, and gas uh, around about sort of 10. So again, that's pretty cheap in the grand scheme of things for ETH, considering you know some of the prices we've seen before. But we need to remember the reason it's so cheap is because you know a lot of people are out of the market at the moment. Everyone wants to jump in when things are pumping and doing crazy. Nobody wants to jump in or have anything to do with the markets when they're not doing so good. Uh, and that's just, you know, the mindset of, you know, the average investor, which unfortunately, you know, that's why they call it the dumb money. Because the average investor is like that, not, not, not all average investors, but most of them are. They don't want to buy into something when it's going down. They don't want to touch it. They only want to buy into things when they're in the green and going up. And unfortunately, that's completely counterproductive to how the really big money make money. Now, it's not as simple as buying the red and selling the green. That definitely is, you know, the basis and the fundamental principles of it. But then you also got to be able to read charts and sentiment and all the rest of it, as we've shown before, and find levels where you think it's a good price to get into. And then, you know, is it a good time? Even if the price is good, is it a good time to do it based on all sorts of factors? Things happening in the economy, you know, world, pandemics, things like that. They're all other factors that have to be taken into place. But all right, let's have a look. Again, the market in general up 3.6% and nearly back to that $1.5 trillion level. And we did get down as low as I think this tipped about $1.1 trillion for a very short while there. So that was pretty scary considering we came from $2.7 trillion. Think about that, $2.7 trillion. So we had an over 50% correction in the entire sort of market space. It really was quite brutal. And hopefully, look, that is it and the bottom's in. There are no guarantees in life, but, you know, fingers crossed. All right, what's done well in the last 24 hours? We can see Bitcoin's up 4%, but again, just in the last hour, still sort of ranging. So what's done well considering the market's up 3.6%? Holy dooly. There we go, internet computer, that really got savaged. This was about $35, 20-something dollars, I think, literally just yesterday. So it seems uh, some money's come in for it, which is uh, good for them, because they were getting absolutely wrecked, down from, I think, $600, $400, something like that. Uh, so basically, that is like, you know, a 90% correction uh, for internet computer. So, oof, nice for them. Uh, XDC network, so you know, nearly 20%. Bitcoin cash, uh, you know, same for them. $30. Whew, good lord, $30. Uh, I remember when that was trading at a few thousand dollars once upon a time. If that's the Bitcoin cash I'm thinking of, this might be another one Bitcoin cash ABC. Yeah, don't know. But anyway, they're up, you know, nearly 20% Celsius. Yeah, we can see a number of gains. Nothing sort of too crazy. You know, there's always a couple of outliers. That's always the way it's going to be. But again, considering the market in general is only up 3.6%, no really, you know, crazy gains. But what about losses? And again, I really just focus on the top 100. I'm not looking outside of it. All right, losses, yeah, very, very minimal. Again, the market in general is up uh, and the losses you know, are pretty low. So we can see Quant down a little bit. They've still had a good seven days. Neo uh, down, Hedera Hashgraph down, so 17 cents. Uh, Theta Fuel, there we go, 41 cents. But again, these are really, really small losses. Then we're starting to get into the, you know, the stable coins. So a couple of okay gains, you know, one or two really nice ones. And in the losses, hardly anything. Again, in the top 100, which is what we focus on generally on you know my channel it's not to say we don't ever look at stuff outside of it but you know once you get outside of the top 100 you really are getting into fairly speculative stuff and you know you start to jump back to i don't know page 10 or 15 or something like that you are really getting into super speculative stuff but look 
you know, any new project has to start somewhere and some of them can definitely start back there. Uh, but for me, yeah, I like to focus on things in the top 100 generally. I do have a couple of things outside of that. All right, let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart itself. So as we can see, we're still in this ranging pattern. We haven't been able to break 42,000 and we haven't broken below sort of 28,000. Just ranging there. Now again, this has been that trend line. If we break out above this trend line, then that's bullish. If we stay below it, it's bearish. So we've had another little breakout again, but is this going to be a fake out? What we need to remember is it's Monday here in Australia, so it's still Sunday evening over in sort of the stateside. So actually it's probably going Monday sort of morning just now. You gotta wait till about eight o'clock in the morning, you know, Monday morning stateside to see what the markets are gonna do. Are the markets ready to start to push this up? You know, we come and at least, you know, retest this kind of, you know, line hereabouts, or is it more downside or maybe just more sideways choppy action? I said this before, look, I think we go sideways for a while. I think as long as there's too many people trying to long Bitcoin, they're going to short the backside out of it. And if there's too many people trying to short it, then they're going to long it. And that's they're just going to keep doing that because that's what a lot of, you know, unfortunately new trade, uh, new people coming to the space, they hear about longing and shorting and they really just don't understand any of it and they continually get wrecked and the big players just continue to, you know, take advantage of those people so for me that's why i don't uh, use any leverage uh, i don't know if i ever will I'm, i probably won't in all fairness but you know never say never i just i see that yeah a lot of people get wrecked and i think a lot of this is that because if you're an investor and particularly if you've come to crypto and done your research then you shouldn't really be worrying if you bought Bitcoin at 41,000 and it dropped all the way down to 28,000, but really it hasn't, you know, dropped below 30,000. You wouldn't have lost too much from sort of 41,000 down to 30,000. And again, even if you bought at 64,000 and it's still holding around 30,000, yes, that's a 50% loss retracement. But if you've done your research in crypto, that's literally just normal. It can get way worse than that. But again, you got to ask yourself, what's the upside? Do you think Bitcoin's going to take four years before it ever gets back to 60 something thousand dollars? Then yeah, you've either got a long wait on your hands or you're going to have to, you know, make a hard decision. Do I sell now at a loss thinking I'm going to buy in cheaper? And if you get it wrong, miss out on the upside. That And, and that is the hard part, uh, as I've said before. You know, I, I generally don't sell on, you know, I, I just hold. You know, I, I like to think I've done at least enough research. I haven't researched every coin I've ever got into from absolute top to bottom and gone through teams and everything. Although I like to do, you know, at least some of that. Most of the things uh, I've gotten into uh, have generally done pretty well. Not all of them. Back in 2017, I got into shitty ICOs that never did anything and got burnt on them. But, you know, I bought into things like Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh KNC, so Kyber Network, and they've all generally sort of held. Now, Kyber Network hasn't done as well as what I'd hoped, but it has still risen in price from when I bought it. So, yeah, for me, I'm more a long term hodler investor than really this trading because this is where people are getting wrecked right now. Trying to go, you know, short and it goes, you know, long, and then they go, right, oh, now I'm going to go long and it goes short. And yeah, that's literally what's going on. I'd say a lot of this is straight up market manipulation. And again, people on people, you know, yeah, some of it would be people, whales and institutions, longing and shorting, trying to shake out everyone they can to get as good a position as they can before they then let it ride and long it while they let it ride as well. That's generally what's uh, at play. In my personal opinion, never financial advice. Right, again, so it is Monday here, but Sunday stateside time, stateside time. So there's not really a lot of news, but I did find some interesting stories. Right, billionaire Salinas, I think that's how your name is, uh, say his name, wants to make Mexico's first Bitcoin accepting bank. So this is the third richest guy in all of Mexico. Uh, he owns his bank. He owns a bank, I say, yeah, probably his bank as well, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and he wants to have his bank accepting Bitcoin. So again, and you know, it was always going to be these smaller countries that are first to adopt because they have no choice. They're stuck in this, you know, US dollar system 
that has just made it really, really hard for them. And so they have had to take that leap of faith and go, you know, as soon as something, not as soon as, because I'm sure there's been other things that have come, you know, before them and they've thought about it, but, you know, it's never really kind of panned out. But now we have this thing that seems to be changing the way we think of finance in general, i.e. Bitcoin particularly, and then cryptocurrencies. And, you know, uh, El Salvador was the first. Seems like Mexico's moving that way. Paraguay, again, I've spoke about this. I haven't heard any more news, but Tonga. So over here in the South Pacific, uh, you know, not far from Australia, not exactly... (laughs) Yeah, I mean, they are sort of our neighbours. We have a lot of Tongans here in Australia, and so hello and welcome to all of them. But they are looking at doing the same, and it'll be all these little uh, sporadic kind of nations that'll do it first because they need to be an early mover on something to hopefully improve their, you know, position in the world, you know, financial race of dominance, and that's what it all is. They're all racing to be the most dominant, and it will be some of these little countries that get in first that will... Yeah, they'll do unbelievable and, you know, as long as it's managed correct, you know, change the direction of, you know, these tiny little countries. And when these big countries like, you know, I think Australia is a big country. It's not all that big. We're not even in the G7. I think we're in the G20. So we're in one of the 20th biggest nations in the world, but not quite up there with the really big dogs. But it'll be when these little countries all of a sudden start to see you know the upside and adopting and the big countries see that it's worked uh, and they haven't had any major catastrophes and all of a sudden you know the national wealth level in those countries really starts to move upwards then you're going to see some you know it'll probably be again some little minnow country we already have that el salvador and please el salvadorians don't get cranky with me but you know in the grand scheme of things and worldwide you are what we call a minnow and look australia's you know not exactly a minnow but we're definitely not one of the bigger countries either so it is those small countries the tiny little ones will be the first and it'll be interesting to see if there's like someone from the g20 which one of the countries from the g20 do it probably one of the smaller ones and look i'd love for it to be australia but it probably won't be but then once it becomes you know again first the minnows the real small you know countries then maybe something like in the g20 and then which of the first world nations you know again things like you know england europe russia you know the u.s china you know all these kind of big nations it'll be interesting to see which one of those then jumps on because it'll be that's how it'll work it'll be that you know little minnow someone a little bit bigger someone a little bit bigger and then all of a sudden Again, some big country will say, yeah, we're doing it. And then it will be just everyone is literally rushing to the door to do it. So very, very interesting for those in Mexico. Uh, And just interesting, you know, for the whole space. We keep hearing little, you know, tidbits of information like this. And look, it seems like tidbits to some people and other people, it seems like a whole lot of information. It's good that, you know, we're getting these, you know, smaller countries starting to adopt it. Because they will force the hands of the bigger countries. And I literally, and I really do mean this, because I want the world to be fair, you know, a lot fairer for everyone. I hope these, you know, smaller countries like El Salvador and, you know, Paraguay and hopefully Tonga and things like that, they get a good foothold and get in early enough that they can really, you know, improve the lives of all the people from, you know, within those small nations. Because, you know, if the big guys just jump in, you know, like tomorrow, then these guys, you know, will fall behind a little bit. Don't get me wrong, they'll still be ahead. But these smaller countries, they really need that big sort of, you know, lift from Bitcoin. Hopefully they can get in early enough and before it sort of, you know, hits that mass adoption. But in all fairness, I don't think we're going to hit that mass adoption. I've chopped and changed about whether I think we are and we aren't. And I, I don't think we are going to hit it this cycle. I think we're probably still two cycles away. It's always the big players get in early, and that's what's happening now. The big players, but they really are 
super early and that's why we got all these big hedge funds and that and then after the big hedge funds it comes the other you know i think there's you know was the s p 500 so there's 500 really sort of large companies in the world and we've got you know hardly any of them into bitcoin at the moment so then it'll be them then it'll be basically you know sovereign countries and things like that and then it will be you know sort of everybody else so yeah i definitely think bitcoin's still probably a cycle or two away from true sort of mass adoption and if we're talking like you know proper mass adoption where everybody in the world is using it i'd say we're probably still maybe even 20 years away from that so i do feel like there's a lot of upside but very interesting for those in mexico and i went off on a bit of a tangent there all right so we all know john mcafee died and he said that all his cryptocurrency was basically gone seems maybe mr mcafee wasn't completely honest and that's not <laughs> unusual for him he's, he's he's had a lot of things go on in his life where people have called him out on stuff and very very interesting that you know he was the one that came out with like antivirus stuff you know to help protect people and he was you know shilling all sorts of you know scam coins and all sorts of stuff he really went from someone who was about you know, I guess the greater good for everyone to, you know, all about himself and, you know, maybe drugs and all the rest of it played a sort of part in that. But anyway, moving on. John McAfee was reportedly hiding out in a Spanish ghost hotel with a Bitcoin mining, mining farm in the basement prior to his arrest. So, yeah, I get the feeling like, you know, all this cryptocurrency that he sort of amassed, I've got no doubt he spent a lot of it, like, you know, go back and look at the footage it's quite obvious like you know he was taking drugs and he even openly said he was taking drugs and you know had boats and all these women and firearms and all sorts of stuff I, I get the feeling like he was probably hitting it pretty hard <laughs> and probably spending a ton of that money so I wouldn't be surprised if he burnt through a lot of it but if he had you know mining farms going and all the rest of it I'd say he had a constant stream and probably still has you know at least a somewhat reasonable amount of crypto sitting somewhere and you know whether his wife got that or wives uh, got that i don't know it'll be interesting to see what happens right this is concerning so boston fed president says the exceptional growth of stable coins could disrupt money markets and there was a tweet the other day again specifically you know the fed talking about tether <sighs> you know we thought that this tether kind of fud was over and I can only hope that, you know, whoever's involved with Tether has been doing the right thing from the start, although we all get the feeling like they haven't. And if they haven't, they are quickly trying to ensure that should they be, you know, properly audited and all the rest of it, you know, and again, the, the Fed come down on them and all the rest of it, they actually have enough to back up what they say. Because if they don't, I think that could really, really hurt the market uh, and create a lot of problems again i don't see that happening you know they were sort of investigated a while ago but i don't think a full audit was done on them it was just you know again a bit of an investigation not a full audit uh, and they couldn't come up with enough to charge them with anything but again it wasn't a full audit i get the feeling like a full audit is going to come to tether in the not too distant future and maybe even you know regulations uh, come where stable coins are just not allowed period you know we'll have to wait and see that's probably a bit extreme but i definitely think you know if tether haven't been doing the right thing i hope that they're trying to you know remedy that as we speak because i think the fed and regulation is coming for them very very soon and likely you know full audits and all the rest of it and anyone who's involved with it uh, will likely face hefty jail sentences uh should they be caught out doing the wrong thing and particularly if there's you know a big collapse in the market and things like that so yeah let's all watch out all right now again there's there's a bit of you know bearish kind of sort of sentiment here so binance all right binance is no longer open for business in canada's most populous province province apparently choosing to close shop rather than meet the fate of other cryptocurrency exchanges that have had actions against them for allegedly failing to comply with ontario security laws so it was binance didn't have to go they just chose to so you know probably making a smart decision there 
but it was because of you know Ontario cracking down on exchanges in general. Now, unfortunately, the bad news doesn't stop here for Binance. So Binance shouldn't be operating in the UK, the Financial Conduct Authority warned on Saturday after the after sorry a Japanese financial regulator issued a similar a similar 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 notice to the cryptocurrency exchange. So there is a number of you know countries cracking down on Binance at the moment. Now in saying that, all that needs to happen is they are going to have to get regulated and I'm sure they're currently working on it. That is why Binance uh, hired, oh God, his name's fully slipped me now. He was the old uh, SEC God, Brooks, uh, Brian Brooks. That's why they hired him to make sure that they're fully compliant and they can get regulation uh, in America. And then I'm sure regulation will follow uh, to other places in the world. But in the short term, things aren't looking great for Binance at the moment. They are having to sort of shut down and stop operating in a number of number of areas. But in saying that, you know, people use VPNs and still got on, you know, still able to use things like Binance and all the rest of it. But that will be sort of uh, null and void, I would say, in the not too distant future, because I have no doubt that Binance is going to get fully regulated, and they're going to do, you know, AM, abide by AML laws uh, and you know uh, KYC as well. So you know, know your customer. You know, they're going to have all of that done and dusted. They just don't have it yet, but I have no doubt that that's the way they're moving, and they will eventually be fully regulated, allowed in America. Uh, you know, allowed over in the UK and Japan and everywhere else, they will just have to make sure they get all of that sort of teed up uh, because, you know, this space, you know, like it or not, regulation, you know, number one, it's already sort of here and further regulation is coming. Uh, and, you know, it, it's that double-sided kind of sword. We want regulation to protect us, at least some of us do, but then we don't want over-regulation where, again, this current new financial system just gets turned into the old system that we know doesn't work and has a whole stack of you know things that have held it back. So we want the appropriate amount of regulation just to you know safeguard people from you know scams and losing their money and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely, we want that kind of regulation, but not such heavy regulation that we don't have this transformative uh, stuff, you know, available to us that can take us out of this system that, you know, really is kind of on its last legs. You know, the, the fiat dollar system, every single fiat's basically, you know, trended to not zero. They say to zero. It doesn't go to zero, but eventually fails. And it's going to be the same thing with the US dollar. We have to come up with a new system that we don't have to keep repeating the same old mistakes over and over again. And there's no guarantees that crypto is something that can kind of, you know, last forever. I mean, nothing lasts forever, but it definitely feels like it is the new way forward. And we don't want to, again, s regulate it so heavily that we, you know, take out what is so transformative about it. Uh, and again, basically turn it into the system that we have that is currently dying in front of us with inflation and all sorts of stuff coming. All right, last but not least... So, abrupt reversal on crypto ban. So, Tanzania's central bank may now be on the verge of a crypto ban U-turn after the country's newly installed president issued orders to embrace the nascent industry. And look, this is this has been happening for a while. Same thing, India's been going to ban cryptocurrencies for ages and they keep sort of getting to a point and then getting knocked back getting to a point getting knocked back and it's getting to the point now where again you know the government uh has come out and said no we're not going to ban it because of a supreme court ruling and we're talking about india at the moment and so crypto is allowed over there are they going to again try and regulate it absolutely but i couldn't imagine there's going to be any country that is going to actually ban cryptocurrencies I think it's all kind of coordinated. They're trying to slow it down so they can get their own heads wrapped around it. This is governments, you know, banks and all sorts of things and get themselves a position in it before they then can say, right, now we can take a step back and just let this thing do its thing because, yeah, there's no way to stop cryptocurrencies now, you know, outside of knocking out, you know, all of the internet, which is just not going to happen outside of some, you know, solar flare or something you know that happens that we have no control of 
cryptocurrency is the future blockchain uh, specifically more so is definitely the future you know some cryptocurrencies will last uh, and i think we need to move away from cryptocurrencies because most of them aren't cryptocurrencies uh they're they're tokens uh of something not so much currencies but bitcoin's a currency you know litecoin's a currency ripples uh xrp is a currency uh and then after that you start to move into you know, different kind of things but anyway again tanzania they've been trying to ban it and now it just seems like they're like okay look what is happening around the rest of the world it's not being banned anywhere there's been a number of you know sort of attempts to try and ban it and do this and do that but in the end yeah big businesses are pouring money into this and other countries would have to be asking themselves why would these big you know massive businesses starting to be putting so much money into this space if it was going to be banned I can tell you right now they wouldn't they would have already been doing their research and they would have been talking to regulators and all sorts of things and that's why so much money has been put into this space and it is still just a drop in the bucket at the moment they're still testing the waters to make sure it all does what it's supposed to do and can scale and all the rest of that hence why if you're in cryptocurrencies right now you are still very early are you 10 years uh, early like when bitcoin first started no but there's so much more going on than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the base of it and the start of it. And there's this whole wide world out there uh, of cryptocurrencies that are still yet to come. And there's going to be a, a ton more really interesting projects that are going to come out. But what I see a lot of at the moment is there's not a lot of new technology. It's a lot of, you know, particularly in the DeFi space at the moment, they're just copying what someone else has done. They're trying to, you know, come and make a quick buck uh, and, you know, think that they're doing it better. There has been some that are very, very interesting and are doing things, you know, sort of different. But really, you know, I'd say most of the players that have been around for a while, things like Aave, things like Compound, things like Maker, things like, you know, Synthetics Network, things like, you know, Yearn Finance, Curve, I think they're really going to be hard to knock off their perch. Now, again, I can't, it's not financial advice. I just think they've been around long enough and they've demonstrated that they understand how it works, that they can make it generally through bear markets and bull markets and all the rest of it. They're going to be hard to knock off their perch because they had that first mover advantage and they have continued to build. Uh, so yeah all these new DeFi projects i see coming out at the moment i'm very very hesitant to really put any money into them if you can get into them early enough and you know get a good pump awesome but you know whether they're long-term holds or not that is where we're going to have to really wait and see they have a long way to go before they can prove that you know they have another 10 years of you know development and growth in them or whether they're just a flash in the pan like we saw last season you know last bull market i should say you know there are all these coins that were going to do all this stuff and change the world and then over the bear market you heard nothing from them and even now you hardly hear anything from them but now that the crypto market's you know starting to bubble up again all of a sudden they you know they're lively on twitter again and lively on social networks and I would say a lot of that is they're just trying to sell some more coins again to make some more money. Maybe not that the chains themselves are completely dead, but hopefully they have learned from the last time that whatever money they make now, they're going to use it to get them through the next market. And they are actively, hopefully, actively still trying to improve their technology. All right, look, that's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train at the moment. And I'll see you next time.